I'm so excited. I love your background. Well, oh, I love your background too. It's really Christmassy. I know. Hey. It's fun. Well, I, 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 we're on teleneurology consults tonight, I think, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're, we're taking uh, calls from all around the world. From... All around. We already have a consult. Okay, well, what do we have? Before that, though, I want you to look at your monitor, behind your monitor. There's a gift for you. So take a look. It's a... Uh... What is this? What do we have? Let me see. It says uh, EEG talk. There you go. Nice. I can see it. I got one for myself, too. Cheers. Cheers. Christmas gift. You asked for it last episode. Well, Merry Christmas. This is much fancy. less than my other one. <laughs> well, let's see. What do we have here? So tell me... Um, What's the uh, what's the age of this patient? Yeah, so it's a funny story actually. It's this uh, 1740 year old man who was found down and uh, taken to the North Pole General Hospital. Seven one th is that right? Seven one thousand seven hundred and forty years old. Yeah, that's what I got here. Yeah, he's a little old. Uh, you know, that's interesting. Um, mm. By coincidence, that's the same age as uh, St. Nicholas. Oh, is it? Yeah, born in 280 AD, hmm. somewhere near Turkey, if I remember. Oh, wow. Huh. That's interesting. What a coincidence. Yeah, and he was found, found by an elf, it sounds like. Found by an elf? Mm -hmm. Unconscious? Unconscious. Okay, well, okay. I, I, what, what's the re reason for the EG request? Yeah, so it seems like he's not doing too well, and they, they're they about to call him brain dead. Oh, they want us to help assess for electrocerebral inactivity? Yeah. Oh, this is serious. I, mm -hmm. Are you sure this is uh, what we want to do for our Christmas special? I, I, I guess we don't have a choice. We just have to read whatever comes in. Duty calls. Okay. Well, we better be careful about this one because um, there are some technical requirements for this that are above and beyond our usual. Um, I, actually, this is a bit of strange. I, I notice uh, we don't have all the electrodes here. Oh, what's, what's I that hit, all about? Yeah, I hit some of them. Well, actually, one of the requirements for assessing electrocerebral inactivity is that we have all the electrodes, uh, mm -hmm. full 1020. Oh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you might think that we could get away with fewer, right? Because if there is electrocerebral inactivity, it should be the same in all the channels. But right. there was a committee that um, decided from the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society, and they, mm -hmm. they do recommend that you have all the electrodes because um, you wouldn't want to be in the position of um, only looking at a few electrodes, like with an operating room monitor or you know one of these reduced channel mm -hmm. things, and then and then put on full electrodes and find that it's only focally, you know, electrocerebral silence. Right. <laughs> you would you, no we have to check full coverage to because the, right. this is pretty consequential. What we say here may yeah. influence a decision to withdraw yeah. care, and if this is who I think it is, that might. You know, children might be upset around the world if we make a mistake here. It is a big deal. Yeah. The, right. um, okay. So this this looks pretty flat. It's not looking good so far. But but let's make sure we're looking at it in the right way. So um, yeah, I see that your your filters. I did you some unusual filter settings. Yeah, yeah. So we don't want the low. We want the low frequency filter to be set at. Um, you know, no, uh, to, to, to filter out no more than, you know, one Hertz activity. So okay. we, we could have it at 0.1 or anything up to, to one is, is technically okay. Okay. Um, and then the high pass filter, I usually like to just have that at 70 Hertz, but we could make it up, you know, 30 if we had okay. a good reason. Why don't we just set it at 70 though? Okay. So that we, we want the, yeah. Oh, now I, I, okay, so here, maybe, what is that uh, high frequency buzz that you see? I think it's because they turn off the notch. Ah, uh, yeah, so we've got some electric, they, so the North Pole does have electricity. Is it 60 or 50 hertz, though? Uh, good question, which I don't know whether the North Pole, why don't we try both? Let's try 50 first. Okay. 
Nope. Not nope. 50. Looks like North Pole's on 60 hertz AC. Yep. Sure enough. Got it. Okay, Darn so it. this is good. Now, um, it looks almost entirely flat. Uh, uh, mm. What about the, um, what else do you know about the settings that we should be using? I think we need to switch the gain a little bit. Why is that? Because then we can look at shorter activity from the brain, be more sensitive. Yeah, I mean, because we can we could make anything look flat if we just turn the gain, you know, way down, right? Uh, right. So we want to we want to amplify things a lot more than we normally would because we're trying to find out if there's any brain activity that we can detect. Right. Should so we, we should fit, put it. Should we fit two microvolts in each millimeter then? Yeah, let's do that. Now, what does that actually mean? Two microvolts per millimeter. I know what the microvolts are. What are the millimeters? So I think it's just the height of those waves. So in yeah, each it's, millimeter it's actually, of height will be represented by uh, representing two microvolts. Yeah, it's the height on the screen. It's 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 the reason for setting it this way is so that we can at least see it with our eyes. Right. Okay. So. Well, and then there, there's one more thing. I think we should look at it this way for a little bit, but then um, uh -huh. we need to come back and, and, and take look with double distance electrodes. Okay. So, um, right, normally the electrodes, you know, in the 1020 placement, they're somewhere between six and six and a half um, centimeters apart from each other on average. Mm -hmm. But we, if we increase the distance between them, we, we increase the our ability to see any kind of cerebral activity that might be hiding there. So we, okay. do you want to switch to double distance now, actually? I can, I can yeah. Let's do that. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. They did it for us. I see you double. Nice. Okay, okay, it looks different. I was, right. I was reading up on it too. It seems like we need to check the impedances as well, just to make sure that everything's working properly. They, who do they have do what what technician do they have at the North Pole doing these EEGs, by the way? Oh, that was the chief elf. Ah, trained in EEG. He is oh. yeah, he's an expert. He's he's gotta be good at everything. Has he been trained uh, especially in um, ICU EEGs? Yeah, I think he's actually the chief and he's taking call tonight just to help out all the other elves. So he, this 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 elf is uh, is no stranger to Brain dead, gentlemen. No. Okay. And millions of them. Good. Yeah. Over the centuries. Over the centuries. Yes. Yeah. So I think we're good there. And he actually he called me afterwards just to let me know that he did touch the electrodes, each one of them, and then he saw artifact on EEG just to ensure that all the electrodes were working. Can you imagine oh, okay. That? You know that's that's good. That I was going to ask that next because you have to check that this this integrity of the system, you mm. know, because it's possible to put the plug the wires into the wrong spots in the amplifiers, mm. or uh, I don't know, maybe not have them connected. And when there's so much at stake, you want to be certain. So I'm glad glad the elf did that. He did. I thought he was just being overcautious, but it seems like it's just the the guidelines. Then, hey, indeed. Mm. Okay. Well, all right, let's see what we find here. I, I see, um, wow, what are these little pointy things? Does, uh, does this gentleman have epilepsy? Yeah, I thought about that too. But then after looking at it for hours, they do coincide with the QRS on the EKG. I'm glad we have an EKG lead. You, how many hours did you look at it? I've been looking at it for like six hours. <laughs> all right. This is, well, this, yeah. this, it's, this is a VIP after all, you know that. Oh, well, that, that's true. There's, there's millions of children, probably maybe billions. Yeah. Who are all over gonna be tuning into this episode to find out uh, the fate of our patient. Uh, yeah. we, you're, I'm glad you've been looking at it carefully. What did you find? I, what do you, what do you conclude these little epileptiform transients are? Yeah. So I, I don't think they're actually coming from the brain because Every single one of them coincide with the EKG and the heart beating there. So I thought actually there were artifacts. What do you think? By Jove, I think you're right. Yeah. They are EKG artifacts. Okay. 
So that's allowed because it's not coming from the brain anyway, right? That's right. Okay. I don't see many other artifacts. Sometimes we'll see respiratory artifacts or artifacts coming from an ICU uh, machine. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do we do if we see things like that and we're not sure they're coming from the brain or, or not? What, do you know any ways to resolve that, those doubts? Hmm, not really, no. So you can put a lead on the hand, but mm. I'm sure the chief elf EG tech would have done that. Uh, did you ask, did they, did they put a lead on the hand? I didn't ask and he didn't tell me. Should I call him back? We better check, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, in this case, it looks pretty, pretty clean. So I don't think there's any, much of a question, but okay. that's good practice uh, to put an extra lead that can't possibly record any brain activity in it. And then you can, if you see the same artifacts in that lead, then mm -hmm. you can conclude they're not, you know, cerebral. Mm, okay. I, I think the self would, would have done that though. Yeah. Yeah. I can text him though. We'll know by the end of our EEG yeah. session here. Yeah. So, so I'm, actually, I'm, mm -hmm. it's looking pretty, it's looking pretty, pretty, inactive what do you think those um what are we seeing there at c3 yeah i actually was wondering about that as well could it be breathing artifact hmm they're kind of periodic every few seconds and so maybe a ventilator is breathing for him at that pace maybe I think so. This was this would be the reason to do the mm. the hand electrode. Nice. Uh, they look they don't look cerebral to me. They look like some type of artifacts. I'm not. Okay. But we better ask ask the elf to go back and check. Okay. Find oh, the source of this. All right, we can ask him afterwards. All right. Well, yeah, not not much going on. There's some artifacts. Some artifact there. Oh, is this the elf maybe touching the? Yeah. Touching a patient. Yeah, he was just touching yeah. all the electrodes at once. So did the um, did did uh, our tech check for reactivity? Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, I did talk to the elf about it. He actually pinched our patient a few times just to make sure that uh, we would see or not see activity on the EEG, and it seems like I went back to those periods and there was there's was nothing there so he wasn't really reactive and he he yelled at the patient's name too to test uh for reactivity to auditory stimulation yeah they're old buddies he was actually pretty sad he did everything he could to get a response yeah and um okay. he checked did he open the eyes and shine a light in the eyes he opened the eyes pinched him nope. really hard no response to visual stimulation mm -hmm. now now what if we see um, muscle artifact is that uh, does that rule out electrocerebral silence or inactivity I don't think so because sometimes the movements can be spinal reflexes or in other words not coming from the brain itself mm -hmm. yeah that's right well, this looks grim. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at, uh, have we, have you looked through the whole thing? It all looks like this. All looks like actually, uh, how long do we need actually to call, to call it electric uh, cerebral silence? We need, is it at least 30 minutes? I think there's actually 30. Oh, so that's why the elf did 32 minutes of recording. Hmm. Hmm. I, I often I like to go and check the guideline usually to, to be sure that we've we're following it because of how important this mm -hmm. read is. So okay. But yeah, I just checked the guideline. It's 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. Let's let's take a look at your report. Yeah. Uh, in case we need to edit it. Okay. So let me yeah, let me tell you what I got. Um, let me know what you think. So for impression, I said. Unfortunately, that there's electrocerebral inactivity, 
and no spontaneous electrocortical activity and no response to all those stimuli we talked about. And then I just went in a little bit of detail to make sure mm -hmm. that it was performed correctly. So we looked at 30 minutes at a uh, sensitivity of two microvolts per millimeter, um, made a note that we looked at it through a double distance montage um, we looked at artifacts. So I thought I had seen some other artifacts, but probably just EKG, right? That's all I saw. We, we need to ask the elf what, what they determined about the other artifact that we saw. Yeah. So we'll ask elf. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Then I said non-cerebral electrodes positioned in the hand showed similar artifacts, but that needs to be confirmed. We need to confirm, yeah. Yeah. Assuming those things were done, I, I number five, no spontaneous electrocerebral activity greater than two microvolts was seen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And no response to noxious or auditory or visual stimulation. Oh, this is bad. You know, one other thing I, I forgot to ask, um, mm -hmm. But this is important. Uh, do we are there any other possible confounding factors here? Is is the you know if if, if for example if the patient is very cold you know if he had mm -hmm. fallen into icy water and he was still severely hypothermic that could that could cause the brain activity to look flat or yeah so I looked at the chart and everything was pretty within normal limits his temperature was fine the systolic blood pressure was greater than 100 it didn't get any sedation so everything looked good from that standpoint to me was there a talk screen done you said he was coming from a Christmas party right uh, he was yeah I think you're right actually there is a there is a UDS and it was actually positive for barbiturates I thought it was a false positive Oh, how high were the barbiturate levels? It was through the roof. Oh my, wait a minute. Okay, that, that's relevant. Um, you know, that the, the barbiturates, well, you know, I, I've heard sometimes the, the, some of the elves like to play tricks on, hmm. you know, and they, they put barbiturates in the punch. Oh wow. And so, yeah, if, if you have enough um, barbiturates, if you have very high levels of barbiturates, that can make the EG flat. Hmm. That, that, that's, uh, so we don't, we actually, I, that throws some doubt on the interpretation of this EG. It's, this may mm. be pharmacologically suppressed. Okay. And I th think um, that gives us a little hope. Yeah, if we say electrocerebral inactivity, is that the same as saying brain death? No, I think it just helps if the clinical scenario and exam fit, but right. we, can't, we can't call it just looking at the e EEG. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we should then add to our report that uh, the okay. interpretation is uh, you know, confounded by the presence of high levels of barbiturates, and that we recommend repeating the EEG when the barbiturate levels are, um, you know, down below the, uh, when they're not, no longer detectable. Okay. So I, I'd say we give them couple of days yeah probably okay let's get to revisit know. this before the before the the night of the 24th yeah maybe there's hope maybe there's hope well there's hope on that note merry yeah. christmas all right all take right. care cheers bye